All right, so we've been talking about the size of atoms, and we looked at this chart, uh, the periodic table, and on this chart of the periodic table that was probably made by Linus Paul. It was made by Linus Pauling. Um, we look at this chart, we see that we know the size of atoms, right? And we know the trends. For example, if you look at the chart, as we go from left to right, they get smaller. As they go from top to bottom, they get bigger, right? And we know that the reason they get smaller as you go across is because you're adding protons, and the nucleus is becoming stronger, right? So it's got more of a pull on electrons. Well, the thing is, this is a nice, simple chart. It helps us a lot. But this is a chart of neutral atoms. Now, not all atoms are neutral, OK? Some atoms are charged. And we're going to talk about those today, and we're going to talk about the size of charged atoms, all right? A charged atom is called an ion, all right? Called an ion. And if it has a positive charge, if it's positive, it's called a cation. And I know that looks like the word cation, but it's cation, just like the positive side of a battery is called the cathode, right? And if it's got a negative charge, if an atom has a negative charge, it's called an anion, all right? Now, let's think about this. Why would an atom have a charge? Why would an atom have a charge? It would have an unequal number of two particles. What are the two charged particles in the atom? The two with charges. The positive ones are called protons, and they're in the nucleus. And the negative ones are called the negative charges in the atom. They fly around the outside called the electrons. So let's take a look at sodium. Here's a Bohr model, right? A regular old Bohr model of sodium. Two, eight, one. Sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons, right? That is why a neutral atom of sodium, we're talking about sodium, that's why an atom of sodium that we drew, that's why this is neutral. If we draw this Bohr model of sodium, we're talking about a neutral atom of sodium because 2, 8, 2, 8, and 11, 2, 8, and 1 add up to 11, correct? Right? So sodium is number 11 on the periodic table, which means that it has 11 protons. If it's neutral, it also has 11 neutrons. Now, let's look at sodium. What is the magic number of electrons? What's the maximum number that can fit in the outside of an atom? The maximum number on the outer shell that you've ever seen? Eight. That's exactly right. So if you're sodium, would you imagine you're more likely to gain seven more electrons or to lose one? Which seems more likely? Losing one, that's exactly right. Now, if we look over here at the periodic table, we're going to see that these stairs mean something to us. Elements to the left of the stairs are all metals, right? These guys lose electrons. And elements to the right of the stairs, those guys gain electrons. All right? That is generally how it works. So if we look at sodium and we realize it's only got this one electron out here, on the, out here on the outside, and I'm telling you that sodium loses electron, which electron do you think, which electron do you think out of this sodium Bohr model, which one is the one that's going to go missing? That one's going to go missing. So if we take an electron away, skirt then now you have a sodium atom that has a charge of positive 1. And some of you may be like, why is it positive 1, Mr. Perkins? Well, your number of protons and electrons is now out of whack. Look, those two cancel out. Those two cancel out. Cancel, 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 cancel. Whoop! We have an extra proton. 
we still have 11 protons, but we only have 10 electrons. So this sodium atom will be called positive 1. And now look, if you've taken that electron, a sodium positive 1 atom, guess what it looks like? Who is this? Who does this look like? Neon. Yeah, it looks like neon. Sodium positive 1 looks like neon. But it's not. It looks like a neon Bohr model. But guess what? It's actually smaller. If we were looking at sizes, and we had sodium positive 1 here, and neon, neon would actually be a little bit bigger by comparison. Can anyone tell me why a sodium positive 1 atom would be smaller than a neon atom, even though they both have 10 electrons? Yeah. Sodium still has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 protons. Neon only has 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these guys are actually being pulled harder to the nucleus. So a sodium positive 1 atom is actually smaller than an atom of neon. Does that make sense? Let's look at an atom like beryllium, and let's change it more than once. If I asked you to draw a Bohr model of beryllium, you would instantly draw this, 2, 2, that's beryllium, right? Now, if I told you a beryllium atom was ionized or charged or lost an electron, if this beryllium atom lost an electron, then we could draw, oh wait, I'm not, there we go. There's beryllium, I forgot to put my two electrons out there, right? So if I told you this beryllium atom lost an electron, you would say, well, then that new beryllium atom would have a charge of plus one because one of the electrons is missing, right? And then if you drew a Bohr model of it, you'd be like, okay, this one's only going to have one valence electron, and it's going to end up being a little bit smaller than beryllium. See, this is the smaller than symbol, right? less than. Why do you think beryllium plus one is smaller than regular old beryllium? It's still beryllium. That's right. We still have four protons in here and four protons here. But these protons are pulling on four electrons. These four protons are only pulling on three electrons. So these electrons are actually pulled in a little bit harder, right? And then now what's the leap that we would make? First, I want to show you up here on the periodic table that beryllium plus one would end up looking like lithium, right? Beryllium plus one would end up looking like lithium except for it'd be a little bit smaller because it only has three electrons, but guess what? It's still got four protons, right? So beryllium plus, plus one would look like lithium. What if I did this? What if I took the beryllium and I stripped both of the outer electrons off? Then I would only end up, that'd be beryllium plus two, and then look how small it would be. Then it would look like who? Helium. So if you notice, let's go back here. If you notice, going from beryllium plus 1 to a beryllium plus 2 is a huge reduction in size, right? And the reason that is, Brogan, is the whole shell is now gone, right? So you can see this pattern on the periodic table. When we go past, here's beryllium. Beryllium plus one would look like lithium. 
But beryllium plus two, where do we go from here? All the way up to here, right? So you can see that huge leap in size, huge leap in reduction in size. You can see that going across the periodic table, and you can predict it. Does that make sense? All right. So let's look at this in the complete opposite way. Let's look at it in the complete opposite way. I've been talking to you about cations, all right? I've been talking to you about cations, and cations are positive. I've been talking to you about atoms that have been losing their electrons. Well, the atoms to the right of the stairs, like oxygen, for example, ends up gaining electrons. Let's take a look at oxygen. Here is oxygen. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to ask you again, what is the magic number for valence electrons in any atom? Sarah. The maximum number we can have in an outer shell. Eight. That's right. So oxygen, here's oxygen. So is oxygen, do you think oxygen is more likely to lose six electrons or to just gain two more? What's it going to do? It's going to gain two more. So if we drew oxygen, one, two, oh. we drew oxygen and we added another electron to it, then it would be oxygen negative one. And instead of having six outer electrons, It's got seven. That oxygen, negative one, is actually end up being bigger than neutral oxygen. Why do you think oxygen, negative one, is bigger than regular oxygen? Okay, here's what it is. You just worded it differently. There are still only eight protons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But now they're pulling on too many electrons. These eight protons are now having to share and pull on an extra electron. So it can't, they can't keep them in as far, right? What if we added another, I do this all the time, what if I added another electron here? So oxygen was full, oxygen negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. See, we can't add any more to it, right? Oxygen negative 2 would even be bigger than oxygen negative 1 because now it has two extra electrons and still only has eight protons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So anions end up getting bigger and cations end up getting smaller. Does that make sense? Who does oxygen negative 2 look like on the periodic table? Well, let's take a look up here. Yep. Oxygen negative 1 will end up looking like fluorine, except for it'll be bigger. And oxygen negative 2 will end up looking like neon, except for it would be bigger than neon. So a nice example here might be, Oxygen negative 2 would have Bohr model numbers of 2, 8, 2. I mean, excuse me, of 2 and 8, right? And neon, it would also have numbers of 2 and 8. But it would be much smaller. It would be much smaller than oxygen negative 2 because neon has 10 protons. Oxygen negative 2 only has 8. Does that make sense? So now you could be asked not only to just draw a Bohr model of sodium, but to draw a Bohr model of sodium plus 1, which would end up looking like neon, right? Okay. Last thing. And this is just an interesting thing to think about. 
what if we had an alpha sequence for sodium? Sodium, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1, right? This is the alpha sequence for sodium. The alpha sequence for sodium plus 1 would be this. Does that make sense? All right. That's just something I wanted to show you. We can also draw Bohr models and write alpha sequence for ions. For ions. All right, I think that's it.